The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too What's her bit? What's her thing? Christmas creep? <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> you still like that, huh? <laughs> it's Whack Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Whack, Whack Friday is the day after Thanksgiving uh, when you go shopping for more weed. <laughs> I guess that sales. is pretty. That is pretty whack. Yeah, I mean, do the, do the <laughs> weed dealers all sort of get together to? Ha- you know, the problem is Whack Friday is sort of bled over into. Wha- I almost call it Thanksgiving, but that's a different holiday altogether. <laughs> um, uh, is it, I, I hear that they blend bled over into Thanksgiving, and now they're doing all their deals then, and it's like these weed dealers should be with their families, disappointing them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is this on the show? Yeah, I think we started. Yay! Oh, okay. Cold I open. <laughs> Cold open. I'm Justin Macro. I'm your oldest brother here. I'm my brother, my brother, main advisor from the modern era. I'm Travis Macro. I'm your middlest brother. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin Macro, coming to you hot and live and loud. Raw and real. It's my brother, my brother, and me. Uh, Thanksgiving is behind us. Whack Friday is behind us. It was also now two days ago, cre- yes. We on that creep. Now it's. Wait, what happens on Monday? Uh, mood, <laughs> mood Ring Monday? No, that's nothing. That's no, not that's not a thing at all. all. Is there a thing that happens on Monday? Yeah, it's Cyber. I mean, it is. It's it's when Monday is reborn uh, from the ashes of Monday. There's a new electronic Monday that has all the emotions of Monday, but new robotic parts. It's called Cyber Monday. It's called Cyber Monday. Is what it it's liquefied? Really called it liquefied the organic material mm-hmm. that used to compose. Monday drank it for energy fuel, and now it's turning it into I don't know, like a fun robot dance or something. And now is this Monday more effective because it lacks like the the fear and hesitancy of Human Monday? Cyber Monday is judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah. Um, our and, only hope and... is our, our only hope is to send Thursday back in time to Sunday mm-hmm. to try and kill it before it's. When it when its mom was pregnant with it, Sunday is Monday's mom. Okay. Do you guys know who really hates Cyber Mondays? <laughs> I'm gonna is guess it Cyber I- Garfield. Cyber Garfield absolutely hates. Yes, Cyber definitely. Mondays crossover. Um, Cyber Synergy. Mon- Cyber. Okay, I every every news story you see is that everybody's shopping online now. Amazon.com. Mm. Oh, man, I read, that, I read that on the Times. The True North <laughs> Pole. That's uh, Amazon.com. I went to the mall on Saturday. Everybody's still at the mall. Yeah. I think they're getting on Amazon at the mall because everybody's <laughs> still there. You, you can't get a Justin, Panera to save you, your life. Everybody's still at the mall. You joke, but even like 10 years ago, well, not 10, like eight years, when, whenever I worked at Best Buy, People would come in, look at the thing, and while standing there, like holding it in their hands, be like, "Yeah, I do want to buy this." They'd put it back, pull out their smartphones, and order it from Amazon to have it shipped to their house. A- Amazon changed the game. They have a thing on their app where you literally like take a picture of the thing, yeah. And Amazon's like, "Oh yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> Let me buy it for you." Oh, I got that Thank way you, cheaper. I-, I got this. Yeah, try yeah, doing yeah. that. Yeah, try no doing problem. that in a small business here in Austin. They don't. They won't allow it. Every time you do that, Jeff Bezos like kicks in the door and takes a dump right there on that small <laughs> business floor. You got these. You just got these. Uh, why does that punish you? Because he's like a punishes the small business. It's symbolic. You're just opening the door for Jeff Bezos to come in and add insult to injury, or 
more specifically to add poop to the small business floor. But you'd think if he was trying to play as retailers, <laughs> Jeff Bezos would pick a corporate location, if only for a time-saving maneuver, because the word would get out quick, right? If Jeff Bezos took a dump in one Best Buy, all the Best Buys would hear about that. But if he goes to Dan and Steve's electronic world, he's gonna like he's got a long day ahead of him of pooping in different electronic mom and stores. No, I know. Stores. He, he's like Santa Claus, but for a very bad <laughs> gift. No, really, that man's put a lot of small businesses out of business. Now they're just smalls. <laughs> Do you think Elon Musk is trying to make all the rockets and stuff so he can make Santa Claus real? That's something that I've thought about a lot. Maybe his end game is to make the dream of Santa Claus like a real thing on Earth. Start over. <laughs> <laughs> lost me start your okay, idea over elon, from the beginning elon musk is doing like um you know space stuff spacex like, guys elon musk is yes, not a not a perfume scent no elon musk is like the boss of Tes- uh, tesco and uh tesla <laughs> and uh, not tesco the british grocery <laughs> store chain but rather tesla uh and he's like into like spacex and all this kinds of stuff uh so my theory is that he's trying to make the dream of Santa Claus, uh-huh. real. He's trying to become a true, true Santa. Uh, that's T R U S A N T A for true Santa. With his different electronics advancements, uh, Elon Musk is trying to become true Santa, and and actually like do the Santa thing in yeah. our life. That's why the Hyperloop is extant. That's why yeah. SpaceX. That's why all electronic cars. That's why it's also important to him because he's going to make Santa real. Justin, can I say? That theory, 100% bulletproof. Santa for real, Elon Musk. Um, can I also say we're doing a night record, which we almost never do, which opens up the possibility that Justin might be drunk. <laughs> Everybody wants Santa to be real. Yeah, <laughs> what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is <laughs> Elon, Musk, Elon Musk had his time where he's like, I, he took a long look at that deep dark shit from here and he said, I can make Batman real. I can make Santa real. I could definitely get one of these done. Yeah. Every rich person's doing Batman these days. Like, that's so Everybody's doing cliche. Batman. Um, is he going to put on some weight? Seems important, huh? Like, why why go through all the, the, the trouble of inventing a rocket sleigh and a Hyperloop and all that shit and, like, not seal the deal by putting on those Santa Claus with an E? Well, B's. that's the thing, Griffin, is, like, the, the horrible truth that he has to face is to do all this work and then realize that really what he was doing is he was setting it up for the next person. That this oh, was shit. not his – it was not his place to become Santa. It was merely his place to facilitate for the Santa-ist person. Welcome to my right. pitch for a new, uh, new web series, The Santa-ist Person. Fuck web series. We can get this on cable. Are you kidding me? This reality show of casting Santa starring your host, Elon Musk? I just feel like <laughs> in this cyber world, we need to move faster than we can with traditional media. And this needs to yeah. be like a minute by minute live stream update. Like, yeah, like it's more like you're just watching this, the different Santas compete 24 seven until last man standing. I'm just saying the traditional, more traditional advertising models are still the most profitable. So it's I mean, it- Okay, listen. <laughs> what if the salary? This is a good show. There's a salary <laughs> on the line of one million dollars a year. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, for one day of work. Out. Yeah, I know. Who's gonna cheer me or something like that? I got a, I got a Yule coming up. So he's got a Elon mm-hmm. Musk has got to find the true Santa. T R U S A N T A. Hey, true Santa. And is that the name of the show? By the way, can we go ahead and put our seal on that? True Santa. I don't think my obscure channel uh, acceptable TV reference is going to be a very good title for that. So we're going to go with True Santa, uh, and it's Elon Musk trying to find the man with the, or woman with the true or in between. It doesn't matter. The gender is non specific to the Santa myth. We'll all compete <laughs> for the uh, the right to become the True Santa. And Justin, and Justin, are you ready? Here. When we yeah. get to season five, we enter robots into the equation. Why? There's only one season because he's Santa forever. He's Santa Claus. He or unless, she. Or well, they. Santa Tim forever. Allen has proven that no one gets to be Santa forever. Is it? Did I they do a Santa, Santa Claus 4 starring somebody else? I mean, not yet. Okay, so you're just full of horse apples, then, it sounds like. Well, but there was another Santa before him, Griffin. It's not like he was Santa Claus and it's, a, oh, shit, it's an Ouroboros. Yeah. He was the Santa what? he pushed off the roof. 
What would be some of the challenges on Elon Musk's bowl full of jelliness? That's passive. Right. So I want. We need active, like a race or something. Oh, who this- like who can fit the most kids on their knees at one time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kid based stealth is definitely going to be like up there. Reindeer, uh, like reindeer acquaintance. Like how 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 compatible are you I, with rocket I, reindeer? Yeah, I mean the only test that's going to matter, right, is can you even ride in the rocket sleigh without just liquefying? Oh, like so it's, is it more of like a G-force, you know, NASA kind of thing? Like reindeers won't be part of the equation. If he could, if Elon Musk could have like figured out the reindeer conundrum like he would have had this sorted a long time ago right Re- reindeer aren't part of it it's hyperloop it's tesla it's maybe paypal to a certain extent i'm not sure <laughs> yes. what pay- you're saying other he- thing paypal is- works in here you're saying true santa once they get wants to win the show the secret is <laughs> they hit up real. they santa for real he hits up la or she hits up la or they hit up la they hit up la done did that what'd that take oh god two and a half hours oh my god mm-hmm. that's I'm way behind schedule to the Hyperloop. Hyperloop, San Francisco. Let's hit you all up. Oh, my God. The sun's coming up. And then rocket from San Francisco? Well, you have to use the RNDRX rockets. And that's what is a, that? That's the Reindeer X rockets. Okay. I'm trying to incorporate uh, the okay. mythos into the new I show. I love this. Yes. Right? Yeah. Y- you got to incorporate the old with the new, baby. That's what this is all about in this ever-changing world in which we live in. Okay. Like in then, a, like in a shitty like modern Wizard of Oz, they would call the teleporter like this is the wizard exactly I Z A R D yeah like oh just hop on the twister that's not what we're calling it Steve <laughs> like that kind of thing you know that um should we do some advice yeah what the fuck is this show <laughs> yeah what is this show about are we doing yeah, it, hey, is this it? here's good news thirteen minutes down the toity. My friends got married in Vegas a few months ago and are having a party because their families are forcing them to to celebrate their nuptials. They insist on not getting them a gift, but all my other friends are getting them gifts anyway. Should I honor their requests or should I just get them a gift so I don't look like a cheapskate? That's from Giftless in the Great Lakes State. Uh, you know what? Notice. I mean, oh. they ain't going to notice. And you have a perfect excuse for not doing it. I de- I they aren't I'm not going to say they don't notice people getting them gifts I'm saying they won't notice someone not getting them a gift. Well, you know what the big hiccup is here? The re- like when people get married, there's a reason you register for shit so people don't all get you like six blenders when you already own a blender. Like so this like I get these people who are like we already have too much stuff. Like when we did ours, we mostly were like, please just like give money to our like honey fund so we can pay for our honeymoon. So yeah. maybe what you want to do is like a gift card that says like, hey, I care about you. Use this whenever you want to get whatever you want. I think a gift card, like rarely do I advocate the gift card because a gift card says- that's not true at all. Well, the gift card says, I couldn't think, I don't know you well enough to have gotten you something myself, but here you go. But I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to say like, hey, I didn't get you something. (laughs) I got you the opportunity for you to get you something. I don't enjoy gift card gifts. Nor I. Because I feel like they're giving me a chore. They, I, every gift card should say, hey, bad news, you've got to go to see your <laughs> so, It should come floating. So, you know, it should, each, gift, each gift card c- should come floating in a, a single size serving, like a water balloon full of gasoline. And for me, it would, I would need diesel. And it, I would have that, and they'd be like, this is, you pop this in your tank, you explode this right in your tank, and you get the amount of fuel that you need to drive to Lowe's and back. And you will spin the gift card floating inside the diesel at Lowe's. Now they're going to smell the gift card, and they are not going to want to take it. Also, the paint's going to come completely off of it because diesel. She's a she's a hungry fluid. You have not given me a gift card to Sears. What you've given me is a year of buying things at other stores, and then on the drive home thinking, Ah, damn! I should have got this at Sears. I got that gift card and everything. I, I should have gotten this at Sears. But yeah, the other side of that coin is it. they've also gotten you the joy of when you open a drawer and you find that gift card and you find that it hasn't expired. And oh, the, like a pirate's like, booty. Well, yeah, the feeling of potential that arises off of a non-expired but forgotten gift card. He's like, yeah. oh, my God, I could do anything with this. Well, have yeah, you but guys more ever done this? Done the Go move ahead. where you find an unexpired gift card and you think <laughs> you do the, uh, all right, bud. 
you're coming with me. Let's do this. And it goes in the wallet in like a prominent place. So I, I'm definitely going to get to an AMC theater very, very, in the very near future. You are top slot here, friend. Um, Your perseverance faves. has paid off, Lowe's gift card. My fave is when you roll it to Lowe's and you're like, ooh, 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 I have a gift card. I'm going to buy this drill. And you buy it and you're like, sir, there's only 71 cents left on this gift card. And you're like, I know. What, do I look like I'm made out of 71 cents? A bunch of them? Do it. Do it. Take it. Shit, I forgot that. And the guy behind cents. you who... <laughs> the guy behind you who is made of uh, several pennies and a couple of nickels says, what's wrong with being made of 71 cents? And then I'm the Skittles logo best. comes up and I'm that's doing... the end of the commercial. <laughs> I'm doing my best back here. We're running off the rails. This Yahoo <laughs> was sent in by Brooks Oglesby. Thank you, Brooks. It's by Yahoo Answers user John who asks... Recurring nightmare, I am on a Nickelodeon game show. I have a recurring nightmare. I am on a children's game show. Like, you can't do that on television or Guts or Legends Whoa. of the Hidden Temple. I always lose and sometimes drown in the green slime. Parentheses, gack. Thanks, shithead. Um, what was that stuff called? I am not a child, but all the other contestants are. I have been having these dreams about five times a week for three months. Uh, I feel pretty happy in my life, so I'm not sure why I should be having these dreams. They children are very mean and mocking and usually cheat to team up. Even with my adult strength and size, they win. Looking for some interpretations or advice on how to not have these dreams anymore. I'm sick of them. Was You Can't Do That on Television a game show? Yeah, I don't Absolutely think there was a competitive. Not. There was not a competitive right. element okay. to it. No. And I'm uh -huh. sorry. And just another point of order as long as we're getting pedantic. Gak and slime are two different things. Yeah, slime is gak, not gak, and gak is not gak slime. Gak was a much more uh, non-Newtonian solid. Yeah, no. If you drop that shit on a child, if you drop like a big bucket of gak, they might actually die because a, a a slower child uh, probably couldn't dig their way out of that of that hearty thick cream. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 slime, I think, was just like water and flour and like yeah. food farts. coloring and, and what? Farts. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> you see when they water dumped they dumped Gak on water. Rosie O'Donnell they dumped slime on Rosie O'Donnell annually at the Kids Choice Awards you're telling me that you're telling me that Rosie O'Donnell walked away she strolled back down that red carpet back to her limo at the end of each night smelling like Nickelodeon slime farts and then agreed to come back the next year and then would come back the next year she <laughs> liked it what I'm saying is that farts were in it now here's my question if you guys could get every night virtually transported to the set of your favorite Nickelodeon game show, and the only price you had to pay was some gentle mocking from children, wouldn't that be worth it? I would love, yeah. I would love to be transported to the set of yeah. Double Dare, for well, example. Well, let's do this. What was your, what's your favorite? It's not what? favorite. It's not favorite. It can't just be favorite. It has to be it's which one you think you would own bones at. And oh. for me, it's Legends of the Hidden Temple. Because that show was about a big statue face that would be like, the princess's chambers had three statues. How many statues did the princess's chamber have in it? Bing, 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 bing. Yes, Jiffy. Two. No, not two. I'm a giant Dumbass. face. I'm a giant face cleft from stone. You should really be listening to what I'm saying. What Jiffy. else are you paying attention? What could possibly be more interesting in the room than me? Yeah, have you ever have you noticed that phenomenon if you watch old Nick game shows? About half the kids do seem pretty distracted a lot of the time. Like, oh what? Yeah, yeah uh through I uh I do think it's a legit fear though, because I bet that you did not get very good explanations of the rules. Like, think about how well you understood, like, so I have to dig between the two giant waffles and find a, f you want me yeah, to find yeah, a Yeah, yeah, whatever, kid, get then, out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's exactly great. it. That's why like half the, the time Santa I'm Claus from a Christmas story just kicking you back down the slide. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's go get him, go find the flags. That's why half the time on Legends... At the very end, the big stone face is like, all right, you're going to go through the jungle, kick over the third tombstone, climb down under that tombstone, jump in the second hole. You want to climb that rope and then turn right, and then you're going to press a button to open up the secret door to the shrine of the silver monkey. And then you're going to put that shit together backwards in reverse order and then go back the way you came, but turn left at the jungle. And finally, you'll find yourself in the scarab's hiding place. 
you got all that? Go nuts. And they forget room one. They get to the jungle like, well, fuck, that was way too much, too fast. I would bet money that at every recording of Legends of the Hidden Temple, a shadowy figure like Slughorn from uh, Willy Wonka would like sneak into the kid's dressing room and be like, I'll give you $100 if you forget how to put together a monkey. Because like, <laughs> what are the odds that like every kid comes in and is like, wait, where'd the feet go? God damn. Oh, shit. Oh, the head no. in the middle? I I don't even... Uh, like, they, they had to be doing, like, I don't even know. That $100 is going to spend so good. Yeah, wait, wait, way better than a Casio I, keyboard. Maybe this is happening all over. Maybe if you were a, a contestant on the Bozo Super Sunday show, a Slugworth-type figure entered your dressing room and said, Hey, listen, if you take a big choke ski, throw in a ping-pong ball into the first bucket, I'll give you 20 bucks. You're not going to make it to the end anyway. What, what why, do you want the magic why? set for? There's no, Mr. You got nothing. Slughorn, can, Mr. Slughorn, can I ask why? 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 Why, are you, why do you want us to perform poorly in Bozo's games? Because every time a kid does well, it extends the length of the show, and the Cubbies are on later, and I want to make sure I don't miss any of the game. You're saying the Bozo Super Clown Show was of a variable length, and the same could be yeah, said of Legends. We're running long. Cut the, the Cubs game Sp- short. Spiffin, you're out. Spiffin, you're not in this one. Sorry, bud. You know the. But I've been working on my long. plate spinning. Why are all of these voices that Ghost of Christmas passed from Scrooged? Are you? Do you not think that there was like there have been like Bozo is is a I I, I agree with you that Bozo is a fixed length. But you know what's pretty rad is if you think about how long that show ran, there was probably a few days like, listen, guys, we have seven minutes until the Cubs game starts, and we have nothing. We have nothing <laughs> planned. You just have to go out there and clown or something. A pies? Who has? Is there someone without there? cards? I don't. I haven't. I haven't done that since college. You can do this, bozo. <laughs> oh, look at this, kids! I'm making a pile of whipped cream on the floor, He's and then uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oops! I stepped in it. Oops, I stepped in the whipped cream on the floor. And we're out. Thanks for watching, everybody. He comes back and somebody drapes like a cape and like a thing of roses over his shoulders. And he's like, I didn't know I could clown like that. I feel alive. Maybe I'll kiss my wife for the first time in 10 years. What if you did tune in to Bozo and it was like 2.53 and you just saw a man in a clown costume just strutting in a circle singing this Sisma Clownin' song. Come on a clowning, walk with me. Your favorite clown, Bozo. Seven minutes of that. <laughs> watch and then just how, cut to credits. Watch the silly way that a clown ties his shoes. Rip, rip, rip. <laughs> over and over. Under Does and somebody oops. have a TV guide that I could read out loud? <laughs> uh, read us another question, yarn spinner. I'm a college student who is house hunting for the first time in my life. Previously, my parents chose which apartment I lived in, but now the reins are in the hands of my roommates and I. Fortunately, finding a house or apartment that's close to campus and within our budget is a lot more difficult than we were expecting. Any tips for house hunting in a city with an extremely overvalued housing market? Almost homeless in Austin. Oh, Austin is expensive, isn't it, Griffin? I mean, it's not just, just expensive. It's, it's like Hunger Games style competitiveness to get the house. We lost the house that we got. The house we got, we were the backup buffer on, and they beat the shit out of us. And it's not, I say beat the shit out of us, the only rule of that game is write a bigger number than the other people. Um, but boy, howdy, did they dunk, did we get dunked on? Um, but hey, it all worked out in the end. It's rough, man. I can't imagine doing that as a student. Is it rough renting, too? Is renting as bad? Oh, yeah, dog. When we, uh, the, the house we moved to this house from, uh, the house we were renting before we owned this house, uh, we were one of 11 applicants that they were Whoa. considering and we had to like sit down and meet them. And then, you know, we wrote them a letter, um, that was there that I made a tasteful new drawing of myself and attached that and just said, whatever you want. And that um, helped or hurt it. I mean, we got the place, didn't we? Well, didn't I we? can say well, we just finished house hunting here in Los Angeles, uh, where it is also quite expensive to live. And, I, I I mean, we had to go look at, like, 30 different places in two weeks. And every place we went to, there was, like, eight other people looking at it at the same time we were. Um, yeah. and, and the key is, like, just if you like it, apply right away. Like, just get, you know, get your name in there as soon as you can. You know, 
check out as many places as you can. Like, have a variable budget. That helps a lot if you can. Like, don't say. Yeah, you keep in mind. Sell high, you know. Yeah, yeah. buy low, sell high. You gotta liquidate your, the correct assets. You gotta keep in mind that there's a billion other people like you who are doing the same thing. And if you think of the mindset of just like, how can I get around those people or beat those people? Like, maybe you go a little bit, just a little bit outside the bubble, just a little bit outside where you're comfortable doing, and you'll find like a really, really nice spot. Or you get on Craigslist and you refresh that shit every thirty seconds, and you email the people when the place you want goes up like instantly, and maybe. Uh, a drawing, a, a noodle doodle. What um, about this? Yes. Maybe expand your concept of what constitutes a house, quote unquote. Okay. Mm, to be continued. It's Perry White. <laughs> so maybe an affordable cave or parking structure or we someone else's those. garage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mini pizza it's, boxes. Many pizza boxes. Many pizza boxes. I mean, what's your? So, what should I put down? Uh, I want to invite you to our wedding. We're getting married in February. Very excited about it. What's your address? Oh, just write many pizza boxes on an envelope and then give it to a bird. A bird, huh? Yeah, just, <laughs> just any bird. Just whisper a secret to the bees. Uh, any bird will do because they'll smell these boxes. We did not. <laughs> we were not diligent about cleansing them of sauces and the like. The de-cheesing uh, solution that we bought at the Family Dollar was not as effective as it Didn't uh, work. had been promised Super to be. Super good. In fact, it just it added a sort of bird-attractive scent that <laughs> is implacable. We have contacted Ralph Nader and the Better Business Bur- Bureau. And the Better Business Brewery. Man, they whip up a fresh IPA. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, a- no, what really helps is pick... Pick a um, pick a Thank neighborhood because things are getting a little bit too getting too funny. funny. Pick a neighborhood that you want to live in and just drive around and look for for rent signs. Because if you go through a service or a website or something, you want to catch something that comes on the market quick. Like maybe like predator. Just like, you like predator, like predator. <laughs> let Justin let Justin make jokes. He's bored of his question. Let Justin make jokes. <laughs> go ahead, Justin. Catch something on the market. And then I just said, like a predator, like catch, a, <laughs> catch, like to catch a predator. Okay. See, isn't that better? <laughs> Aren't we all happier now? Aren't we having a good time? Well, now? I mean, except for like the three people that were trying to buy a house in Austin and we're taking furious notes. But other than them, I think everyone's doing very well. Shoot us an email if you want to know my realtor. Uh, she, she's a, she's a man. She's a beast. She she tore shit apart. She's a bear. Us. She's actually a living bear and not a dead bear. Should we go to the money zone? Yeah, we've certainly earned it this time. You say that half the time. People obviously are consuming our product week in week out, even if it's distasteful it to this us. Time, I I I I I climbed into your fucking ex- uh, uh, careening jet of a question and tried to pull up, pull up, pull up. I thrown in some catch a predator <laughs> jokes just try to keep this shit afloat. Sorry, Is it a ship or a jet? Mixed. Yeah. Sorry, I said sorry my metaphors got mixed. Maybe if I had some more money, I wouldn't be so distracted. My metaphors would be more on point. See, Nailed confidence. It. Confidence. Confidence. <laughs> got a new sponsor to kick things off this week it's club w so let me tell you how this works it's a it is a wine club uh that's what the w people get together for. they complain about stuff it's better than that there's no interacting with other people who like wine you just go to club and answer six simple questions and then they've got an algorithm that creates a palette profile just for you now th- and then they send the wine directly to your door perfectly customized to match your taste here's the neat thing about that like you i, I went through this process um they don't it, it's it's kind of pointless for me who doesn't know a lot about wine to say you know i want a pinot noir or i want a pinot gris or i want some chardonnay i don't know what i want i have no earthly idea their questionnaire asks you things that you actually do have like a reference point for stuff like like how do you take your coffee? Do you know do you like it creamier? Do you like it black? Or you know do you like uh, what kind of fruit pies do you enjoy? That kind of thing. Have you, you ever you killed a, just um, for the fun of it? Yeah, have sure. Have you ever killed just for the fun of it? What um, and then it has some fun Monty Python joke references like that whole land speed of a swallow thing that's in there too. It's great. It's got a little bit of everything. Uh, that's not, but 
it, it is questions that you might actually have a reference point for, even if you don't drink a lot of wine. They are leading the grape-to-glass wine revolution, um, and that is a fancy way of saying that they actually work with the people who are making wine, and they don't have a middleman. It's just like, get it from those people, and then they bring it to you. Uh, the labels look cool. Uh, what I like best about it is that uh, the wine comes with an informational card that explains to you sort of like grapes are in it, where it's from, flavor profile, that kind of thing. So you can read the card, and then if you have a party with people over, you can hide the card and just seem really smart about the wine. Uh, and not just that, let me say, like, this sounds like one of those, like, super expensive of the month clubs, right? Where you're like, oh, I'd love to do a steak of the month club or whatever, and then it's like $50 a steak. This is like so reasonably like if i may if i can let you in on a secret that you would find by going to their website it's like 13 dollars a bottle they have a no risk 100 percent guarantee that they'll love what you send through if you don't love it they'll make it right so don't even don't even trip on it uh, right now club w is offering mbmba listeners 50 percent off your first order when you go to club w.com slash my brother that's clubw.com slash my brother to get 50% off your first order. Uh, if you have wanted to get more into wine, I cannot think of a better way of of getting getting your foot in the door. So they've allowed us to do uh, the very first podcast version of the six questions that they ask to discern what your wine tastes are. Um, so I can, do you guys want me to bounce it off you two? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, it's your birthday. Someone gives you a calfskin wallet. How do you react? <laughs> um, I probably stroke it awkwardly, but intensely, and thank them. Oh shit! Sheer delight. Oh no. Sheer delight. Well, tr- okay. Good news. Travis is an android. Justin is not. Oh no. Well, oh, wait on. a minute. That this does not inform our wine. My brother, my brother, means also supported in part this week by Harry's. They've got a limited edition holiday shaving set. Here's what it comes with. Copper-plated razor handle. That's going to look good. A couple of five-blade oh. cartridges. That's going to feel good. Shaving cream. That's going to smell good. And a cool travel kit to hold everything. That's going to taste good. Probably. Wait. Yeah. Hold on. You don't don't eat the travel kit. This is not us no, advocating. No, don't eat it. God, no. Don't eat it. Just taste it a little. Oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> it's a good bag. Uh, holiday shaving sets are uh, all at different price points, starting at 15 bucks. Uh, Harry's, you know them. You should definitely be getting your razors from them by now instead of buying them in a store for $400,000 a piece. Just go to Harry's. You can get them for cheap and, and as a like, special offer. You don't have to what? get an employee to come over and no, help it's, you because it's like under lock and key and there's an alarm on it. Ugh, I hate that stuff. I'm not a criminal. I'm like, yeah. I need to shave. Um, somebody's jangling something around in their hands. Thank you. It's a special offer right as a special offer right now. Harry's will give you five dollars off your first uh, order with the code my brother. You get free shipping for the holidays, uh, although that ends on December tenth. That's H A R R Y S dot com and enter the code my brother. We also are sponsored this week by Me Undies. A friend of the show at this point. I, 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 there's lots of copy here that I'm gonna read, but first let me say this. I am such a huge fan of MeUndies. They had, uh, as part of like their Black Friday weekend sale, 25% oh, off. Dunk. Yeah, dude. That. Damn it. Like, Teresa and I went underpants crazy. Like, we each ordered, like, six pairs. Because we love MeUndies. Like, it's my favorite. And when those six pairs arrive, I'm throwing out six pairs of old shitty, like, from the store underwear. Yeah, I'm good. So- well, not shitty. But you know what I mean. I'm so excited. You, po- so you pooped in them. I <laughs> I pooped in them. Listen, I'm an adult. And you, and I'm an adult man. Them and I for kept reasons them. we dare not contemplate. I kept them. MeUndies is dedicated to creating the world's most comfortable underwear. Every pair of MeUndies is made of micro modal fabric. Um, MeUndies has a ton of different colors to choose from, is the only place to find styles for both men and women, and has a new signature design every month. Therese and I got a couple matching pairs. It's fun. Do it if you're a couple. What's it's the end fun. game? What's the end game there? It, well, it's a secret that you share with your lover. All right, and, I, and you could match everybody. Ask, ask everybody can match. Everybody can match, sir. If you're in some kind of like polyamorous, you have eight lovers. Get eight pairs. Everybody can match. Yeah. Beyond, uh, they also just launched a new boxer line. It's like wearing nothing at all, only better. And with the holidays around the corner, MeUndies makes the perfect gift. I agree with that completely. Shit, that's a good point, yeah. You can go to MeUndies.com slash my brother. Right now, you get 20, 20% off your first order 
Plus, all orders in the U.S. and Canada always ship for free. It's incredible underpants. I guess my question is, what does an Android need with underpants? Like, what do you got to hide down there? You bite, you bite, you oh, no, smooth. it's smooth, but they're so comfortable, I don't even worry about my genitals. Right, you don't ha- but you don't have them. You just got a little battery pack or something. Oh, man, we have uh, got, personal His battery pack suit, shaped but... like a dig dog, though. Oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, golly. Pack a, pack a D-volt down there. Uh, we also have a couple personal spots here I would like to talk about before we talk about my smooth genitalia. No, I'm, this no, I'm not smooth. They're shaped like a dick. <laughs> it's still smooth. It could be it could be shaped like a dick and still smooth. All right, stop and read these questions. It's who is this message fun. for? It's yes. for Andrew Johnson. Who is this message from? It's from. Uh, I like to think from, it's for everybody. Well, it's from Eleanor Haskin, but we'll say it's for everybody. Like the duct tape bandit, you've stolen my heart. Oh my Between God. the Mothman Festival and Disney World, I guess we fell in love. But I still know no one could wish you a better birthday than your favorite brothers. Yeah, that was some tight ass West Virginia lore. But have we talked oh, about shit, Casey? I forgot about the duct tape band. Yeah, have we talked about Casey yeah. Kazee and his perfect crime? <laughs> no, I was thinking of the sticky bandit. I was way off. No, duct tape bandit was no. Casey Kazee. He conducted the world's only perfect crime. Look it up, Google it. <laughs> to this day, nobody knows his name. Um, yeah, I know his name because I was him for Halloween, and that was a good slash bad hurtful costume. Hurtful to my face, duct tape wise. Uh, and we have another personal message. This one is for Matt Always Alone Jones, Aww. and it's from Sophie Wellfit Johnson. You wished me happy birthday. Well, I'm about two months late for yours, but baby, I'm late. I'm not pregnant, obviously. Sex is involved. But poo, 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 I'm drunk. I can't really afford this. <laughs> Love you. Can't wait to see you in November. Whoops. I hope you're less hideous than when last I saw you. Oh Hashtag my- drunk purchase. God, yes. We should have. This is, a, this is fucking place. all there time. Should, there should be standard. We should have some sort some sort of a, a, maybe a breathalyzer or something. <laughs> They are going oh, to be. Oh man, I ain't hope no return on sort of jumbotrons, like, folks. <laughs> some sort of confirmation Holy. email, and they're just driving in their car listening. Like, whoa, this person sounds drunk. Whoever this was, I sure feel bad for them. Oh, oh no, it's me. Ah oh, man, ah damn it. Definitely balling. I was, I was about to say, like, yeah, we should make you like a tattoo parlor where you come in, you can't get a tattoo if you're drunk. Except she used words on our show, so it's like she gave us a drunk tattoo. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They they make us say the, the words. Amazing. What if there was a tattoo parlor <laughs> that where you came in drunk and then the tattoo artist had to give themselves whatever tattoo <laughs> that you came up with? Can you do a Popeye, but just the bottom half of them? <laughs> what? <Ooh>. Okay. <laughs> do Popeye, but he's fighting a dragon. And the dragon is my mother. Yeah, but she's got Popeye's face. And it's like, what? <laughs> Popeye's I'll, kn- I'll know. <laughs> underneath it. I'll get Un- it. Underneath it, in block letters, I want you to, I want you to put Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> but spell it Pearl Jam. <laughs> and with Sanskrit. <laughs> I've sobered up by this point. Listen, I'm dead sober now, but I still I I need this. Tattoo. <laughs> I've been planning this tattoo for months, and it's for you again, just to restate again. The bit. Again, I've looked you, at the tattoo I've been, I've, been, swear. I've been scoping your body out for months, trying to think of the perfect tattoo, and I think what we've landed on, which is Popeye's bottom half fighting a dragon shaped like my mother, and then underneath that in Sanskrit, Radiohead spelled Pearl Jam. <laughs> I think that we've really split the uprights. <laughs> Let's be honest, we live in a world with too much media. You need a podcast on the front lines figuring out what's great. We're here for you. We're Pop Rocket. I am Guy Branham. I'm a comedian. I'm Winter Mitchell. I call myself a digital strategist. <laughs> I'm Oliver Wang, <laughs> academic and disc junkie. Margaret Wappler, je suis as journaliste. <laughs> and we watch, listen to, and read everything so that you don't have to. And then we tell you about all the things that you'll love to love. Find us in iTunes or wherever you download podcasts. Pop Rocket, every Wednesday from Maximum uh, you guys want a Yahoo? Yes. <sighs> no. This Yahoo was sent in by Rachel Rosing, formerly Rachel Sperling. The name done changed. 
but the game still recognizes the game, and it's still a gerund. I think she deserves a new moniker, like Game Changer. Game Changer's fine, but I still like game. But recognize, I still think she wants the game recognized. Oh, I, Game Changer recognized? Ga- no, Game no, recognized Game Changer. Too much, too much, too much. Mm-hmm. It, we'll it get ain't there. It ain't broke. Don't don't fix it. Rachel Rosen, Game Recognized Game. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Turtha who asks. How do I make something look like an old man was saying it? What? I am writing I am writing a web novel. There is an old man there. I want to make his dialogues to seem like an old man was saying it. Give me some suggestions on how to tweak general dialogues to make it seem like an old man was saying them. Uh, so it's NaNoWriMo for the next, when this comes out, 14 hours. So <laughs> I need you to get started. <laughs> I am so far behind. Um, how do you write a book? I don't read a lot of books. I mainly just, you know, play Bloodborne all day. Um, so, like, in a book, if there's an old man in a book, and I know there's not a lot, how do you, how do the, the writers of the book make it, like, when you're reading it, how do the writers make it, like, when you're reading it, you'd be like, oh, that's an old person saying that. Well, I know, okay, so the one thing I know about old people speak, old yeah. speak, yeah. is that they talk real slow, right? They talk, like, they got nowhere to be, so maybe one word per page. That's too, that's... Probably, I'm going to go ahead and separate there. A publisher probably won't approve that just because price wise. How about one word per line? Is better. Meet me in the middle. Uh, two words per page. Two words per page, I guess, would be meeting you in the middle. All, all right. right. Still, all right. I feel like I won this negotiation. Yeah, yeah shit. Um, how do you make it look like an old man was saying it? Can you make the, ooh, can you make the pages where the old man has dialogue in it smell? Like an older man. Nice. <laughs> so the book, like Old Man in the Sea, they would not even put that in library shelves anymore. Or they would put it in a special room um, that was, you know, hermetically sealed. Be- Wait, because it smells like an old man and the sea? Well, no, it would only smell like an old man, but I imagine there would be a lot of books that are, like, old man just all over them. Um, most Dickens books, I imagine, would be like, oh, welcome to the Dickens room. Yeah, it's, um... It smells like the Dickens. Oh, man. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great. You just draw, like, uh, tiny, um, spider webs between the double L's and the double R's and stuff. Ooh, I like that. The what about E.E. E. Cummings? You make the words in the shape of an old man. <laughs> like the pros. It's gonna take some pros. doing. Yeah. Yeah, what if sure. you, you made it like those greeting cards that play music, and just every time you open to a page where it has old man dialogue on it, that <laughs> auto plays like just a general moan from an old man. Like you open, you turn to page <laughs> sixty one, and it's just like, <laughs> and then you know, make you write a program, perhaps in Q Basic or some other sort of software, where every five words it would just insert open bracket cough close bracket, just yeah. every five words or so, just insert a cough. In there, because he's coughing. He's old. That works for me. Um. <laughs> and the webs thing, too. What about, like, uh, just all in caps? Why for that? Well, he's an angry old man. It's specific to an angry yeah, old but man. Yeah, but, I mean, even when older folks get angry, they're still older, and their, like, throats don't work as good, so they can't What about yell. all in caps with a smaller font? That's working for me. Gonna lose a little bit of that spider web effect, though, I think. I think I'm really just sort of stuck on this idea of stinky books, gang. <laughs> I guess you really want to intru- introduce that. The problem um, is, Griffin, I've seen, I've seen, I feel like it's a slippery slope. Okay. Where do you stop? When you do, like, the sun also rises and you turn to a page and it smells like a bullfight. Right? Like, yeah. where do you stop? Where, where do you draw the line? Where's the line drawn for stinky books? I Sorry, saw Charles, you need to back up for me because for the first time in literally 13 years, I actually wanted to read a book. What you just described for me is a sensory experience that I would love to have. Yeah, we're talking about four D books, fellas. This is it. This and is the, the fourth D is- stands for smell. Yeah, this is our legacy. the dimension of smell. Listen, I saw Page Master when I was a little kid, and those books came to life. It took Macaulay <laughs> Culkin on it. What's that? And that smell. <laughs> No, the movie didn't have it. It was not a 40 You didn't see it in Sense Around? No, you're getting... No, all both of you are getting confused about a lot of things. <laughs> I 
doesn't sound like us at all. I saw Page Master when I was a little boy, and I was like, I want that. Whoopi Goldberg becomes a romance novel or some shit. That's not how that movie happened. I don't think there was a romance novel character that was like, yeah, his dick. <laughs> also, Whoopi Goldberg wasn't transformed into a romance <laughs> novel. Yeah, Necromancer did it to watch the movie. Uh, anyway, I've never had an experience like that where a book came to life and took me with it to somewhere. <laughs> away from the library and my mom came back and was like where did griffin go books took him away again yeah damn it <laughs> um i want that though and i feel like smell's gonna get me there yeah it's like a whole my eyes world. Are, my my fucking eyes and brain and reading comprehension certainly have not done it yet <laughs> let's get my nose in the mix that would be a rough temptation, though. Like, if you're if you're an author who's cranking out a lot of books, like you're Stephen King's or what have you, there would be a temptation to maybe lean on this new technology a bit. Like, listen, I don't know, how, I don't know how to spice this story up. We're just gonna have to let the smell take it from here. Uh, get 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 our best smell guy on this one. See if he could punch it up a bit. Cause I I got nothing. I got no closer. See, I got no act three. Got no day Moi, No rising action. You're putting in too much effort into it in authoring new works. I'm saying with Return of the Classics, let me hit you with this. 4D Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? That, yeah, I think when Roald Dahl wrote that shit, he was like, mm, this is going to be perfect. Sticky boy, come with me. <laughs> like he wrote that in a, a fever dream waiting for 4D technology, and here I am. But Griffin, what about like, wait, like, you're so excited because you get to like your favorite book, Three Musketeers. You get to read it in 4D for the first time. And you open them like, oh, shit. Everything in France and England smells like shit. Why are you only thinking about the bad stuff? Sticky boy, come with me to my book of pure candy smell tasting. <laughs> this whole book smells like Oompa Loompas. <laughs> You're thinking of the worst part of it. <laughs> Chocolate boy, come to town. Smell my book and then take it to daddy. <laughs> you know, really, one really sad thing is that Roald Dahl thought this technology already existed. So every time he'd watch someone read one of his books for the first time, he'd just sort of <laughs> raise his eyebrows and expectation every few pages. Like, Tell me about the snozberries. Roald, Roald, your book is a masterpiece. You don't even fucking get it yet. <laughs> You're not even reading it right yet. Live in it. I've been wondering why all the old doll, doll books I have have a a, a smell disc sleeve in the in, right near the jacket. Apparently, he's just future proofing them. Sticky boy, that's yeah, that's gonna be caught in my head. Um, <laughs> you that want, fake song you question? came up with. Yeah, I, I, like we can move on to another question, but it, like while we talk about like you know somebody's shitty roommate or something i'm just going to be thinking of how this 4d technology could completely change the landscape of book technology if you not i don't i don't want to put the i don't want to uh muddy the waters by talking about this in movies but for some reason i've always like had a really intense fear of the scene in wonka where uh gene wilder gets really angry at me yeah or, or at Charlie. You? well it feels that way doesn't it and the um I always get this really intense fear about that scene, and I just wanted to mention that, like, I'm glad this technology doesn't exist for that, because I bet that kid, between, like, angry, heavily acting Gene Wilder and some old suits (laughs) that they definitely rented from, like, a funeral parlor or something, and, like, the sets and all the, like, candy that he has, like, under his fingernails and stuff, I bet there was, like, some intense smell action going on for young charlie buck at that day i yeah. bet he did not have to put too much energy into also, crafting a performance i i doubt charlie bucket was a was a shower a day kid yeah how about the same yeah, you know, grandpa is. joe has just climbed out of his bed of filth for the first his yeah. li- bed of filth and by the way lies he's been fine this whole time yeah uh, garbage. PS, we can't sorry, talk Mom. again about the lies <laughs> i know we absolutely can't joe. okay but like and he smells bad I do want to say you're talking about 4D Charlie, and the scene you brought up was the scene where Gene Wilder gets mad at some children in a tunnel, and not a scene where a little boy and an old man burp on each other for 45 <laughs> minutes. Don't want to talk about that stink. An old man who we've already been told has been fed nothing but cabbage for like a oh year. Oh my god. <laughs> He's the worst. <laughs> He's the human embodiment of a fart. Yeah, he's a nightmare. I hate his guts. <laughs> Everything about Grandpa Joe is fart. <laughs> I hope. I wish he would have gotten chopped up in that fan. 
when he left, I guarantee Grandma Josephine and the two other old people in the same bed were like, we can all agree we hate him the can most, we, right? Like, we're so fucking glad he's gone. Yeah. I hope he dies in a fan. <laughs> old Doll's original title for Charlie the Chocolate Factory was Sad Cabbage Boy Prays for Death. It's the original <laughs> thing he wanted to call it. Sad Cabbage Boy's Never- Candy Contest. <laughs> Asterix, fix this in editing. <laughs> Note to self, think of better title. <laughs> Sad Cabbage Boy's Lucky Draw versus Candy King was the original title. <laughs> also, fat kid there stuck in tube? Question mark. Not sure. <laughs> Blueberry Girl goes to Juice Party was the original name. <laughs> Very erotic. Very erotic. Very different book. <laughs> oh, man. I think we should just shut her down. Yeah, let's cool. wrap it up. Uh, my name Holy is Justin shit. McRoy. Nope, we're going to talk about nope, okay. advice that podcast. Part. I got an exciting announcement. If you are a Maximum Fun Drive donor uh, and you have that link to all of the Max Fun Drive bonus episodes, I'm dropping a lot of knowledge on people. Maybe I should back up. Hi, folks. This is me, Griffin McRoy, from My Brother, My Brother, and Me in the Adventure Zone. And tell Death to Us Blart. More on that later. Um, we, we are a, a listener supported network of podcasts, maximum fun. We talk about them every week. There's a lot of really amazing shows on the network. Um, you'll probably hear some new promos cause we just did new promos for all the shows on the network. You'll probably hear some of those, uh, on, on our show. And if you hear something, it sounds good. By all means, go listen to it. It's all free. It's all really great. And that's thanks to you because we are a listener supported network. We get donations every March is when we do a max fun drive. Uh, and people like you support us and we're very, very grateful. Uh, and we always do really nice rewards for folks who, who are new donors um, during that Max Fun Drive. And one of those bonuses is bonus episodes of our show. And we've talked about this for a while. And uh, they actually recorded it like a month or so ago. Uh, but we finally did My Sister, My Sister, and Me. Uh, and by we, I mean our wives, Sydney, Teresa, and Rachel. Uh, and I just finished editing it. And it'll be up this week. And it's very, very funny if you're a Max Fun Drive donor. Uh, you'll you'll already have the link. Uh, so yeah, in, enjoy that that content. If you want to get on board, you can go to maximumfund.org slash donate and find out how. Uh, and yeah. I have also been told, and this is from the Adventure Zone, so don't and don't hold me to this because you know stuff changes, but when last I was told, I was told that there's going to be some Adventure Zone merch up today, Monday, when you Ooh. hear this. If not today, it'll be up soon. Um, some t shirts, uh, one of my favorite things. There's a whiteboard character sheet oh, fuck. designed for us. Yeah, designed for us uh, by the guy who did our poster, Justin Gray. And so you can write on it and then erase it whenever you need to. That's really it's, cool. It's an amazing thing. I, I'm a huge fan of the idea. Did the Bureau uh, of Balance gonna, thing go up? I'm not sure if everything's going up all at once or if okay. it's being released as they get it done. But if you go to maxfunstore.com. You'll find it. And not only that, we have a ton of other merch on there. Some other My Brother, My Brother and Me, some Sawbones merch. There's a bunch of other stuff on there. So go check it out, Um, especially with the holidays coming up. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Also, uh, we've got our Candle Night show coming up Monday, December 21st. It's our annual holiday spectacular pan religious pan sexual personal pan holiday for everybody no cursing so it's it's good for everybody bring your grandma bring your you know kids nieces nephews whatever we're gonna try to keep it pg 13 maybe not like a six year old are you kidding me pg pg 13 yeah bro there's still mature ideas there's gonna be some mature ideas like taxes and stuff but uh, come to it. If you're interested and want to get tickets, go to bit.ly forward slash candle nights two. Uh, make sure you put the two in there because candle nights was last year and those tickets aren't available anymore unless you got a time machine. Yeah. It's in Huntington, West Virginia. It's only 20 bucks and it's going to be super fun in our hometown. All of us together. We really want to see you there. Um, thanks again to MeUndies who are dedicated to offering the most comfortable underwear. If you go to MeUndies.com slash my brother, you can get 20% off your first order. Uh, also do want to mention we have another podcast, a new podcast called Tell Death to Us Blart. Yeah. And it's an annual podcast that came out last week. Justin, you want to tell us about it? Yeah, it is a podcast that will uh, last forever. It's released every year on Thursday, uh, uh, but the one that is Thanksgiving uh, only. And uh, it's released every year, and it will be forever, forever and ever and ever. It's Right now, 
it's us uh, and the guys from uh, the worst city of all time. When um, one of us beefs it, we'll change hosts. I've already announced, but I until announced then, it's to the five Justin of us. And Griffin on Thanksgiving that when I died, my nomination was to be replaced by Stuart Wellington of the Flophouse. Oh, yes. Uh, I feel like he and I vibe really well. Okay. Who did you say, Justin? I want Lindy West. She's really funny. Um, I think I'm going to do Nora Jones. Ooh, well, it might be a tough get, okay. but who knows where we'll be in seven years. Uh, it's once a fucking year. You think Nora, Nora could help me out once a fucking year, Nora Jones? You can check that out at tilldeathtoasblart.com, or you can go on iTunes, Till Death to Us Blart. I wanted to mention, if you are a longtime fan of My Brother, My Brother, Mate, you probably remember uh, a guy named Rocky Horror who did some mixtapes for yeah. uh, 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 My Brother, My Brother, Mate. Uh, well, big, big, big news. Uh, he's coming back for, I think, what is the fourth mixtape? Uh, but you can find out for yourself because if you go to uh, uh, he uh, he's on Twitter at Hellhouse Pod. If you want to find the appropriate links or what have you, uh, the, he's going to start dropping the old mixtapes, the former My Brother, Brother and Me mixtapes, which are like our show mixed with like club yeah. bangers. It's a it's a really sublime combination, and he's got a new one coming out that you'll want to subscribe for. So just go to like go search for the Hellhouse Podcast series. On uh, iTunes or follow him uh, at Worship the Sky or at Hell House Pod uh, on Twitter, and uh, you'll be you'll be. Uh, thanks to Sean Roger the Long Winters for the use of our theme song "Is a Departure" off the album "Putting the Days to Bed." It's a really terrific album. Uh, you can get it on vinyl if you want to get that for somebody for the holidays. I'm a Bim Bam fan or just a fan of good music. That's a good gift. Um, and do you guys want that final Yahoo? Are we done? Yes, please. Oh, super quick. Uh, to the P.O. Box, I got, uh, we, I have gifts for you boys that I can give you when you come in for candle lights. Uh, I also have, I received a, uh, a beautiful gift, which is a Blu-ray copy of, uh, Men at Work, uh, that I now own from, uh, that comes from, uh, Joe. Uh, Dr. G sent us, uh, each, a book called Second Quest, uh, for us to enjoy. And then I have, uh, Birthday presents for Griffin. Sounds about right. Uh, also from Joe. I don't know why he sent them to me and Griffin, but maybe they're for also for Travis huh. to share. I, I right. can't help you. Those from Joe also. So um, thanks. And everybody. real quick, before I forget, on the PO box front, I am moving. I'm in the process of moving. I have just moved, um, and I will be switching to a new PO box address. For right now, the old one is still active till the oh end of God, January. No. So if you've already sent something, don't worry. It's gonna, Travis, uh, you're going to get shit at, on that for the rest of your life. Why? Because people are going to listen to old episodes of the podcast and be like, "Yeah." That's why I'm keeping. That's why I'm keeping it active. But I am going to set up a new one and slowly okay. transition over to the new one. So, just I'll get once I get the new address, I will let everyone know on Twitter and Facebook and on the podcast and everything. So, just hold off sending anything until then. Final Yahoo! Great. Is sent by Ira Ray. Are you Ira Ray? Who wants to know? It's by Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something has gone wrong. Let's bump it down to. Melanie. Melanie asks, Don't you hate people who think Barney and Fred are from Fruity Pebbles? They're from Flintstones, you idiots! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Justin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad's school. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are the lips? MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. We're Dave and Graham, and we host Stop Podcasting Yourself. We started this podcast back in 2008, before podcasts had to have any kind of concept, so we don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of like going to the barber shop if your barber knew all about the first season of the show Elf. It's like a 90-minute massage where the masseuse is two people talking to each other with a third person. It's like the Monsters of Metal tour, only quieter, no music, and just talking. It's like a makeout session, but without the lips touching, they just talk a lot. Download Stop Podcasting Yourself from iTunes or MaximumFun.org.